For as long as history has been recorded, man has had an insatiable hunger for knowledge regarding the universe. To understand why man is so interested in this unknown expanse of space around our little world, we must take a journey. Please, sit back, relax, and free yourself from the bonds of our planet as we take off for the stars. There are no aliens out there. Now, if you believe that, you probably believe a lot of things that you probably shouldn't believe. The thing about the possibility of life existing elsewhere. It is important to us to know if we are alone in the dark. Why haven't we heard from anybody? Because we're not listening hard enough. We're not being diligent enough. We're not thinking it through well enough. Almost every star in the Milky Way has a planetary system, and there are tens of billions of terrestrial, so Earth-like planets. Wouldn't aliens engage in some recognizable activity? And now, we felt that searching for radio transmissions was the most promising way to search. And we're in a universe already being controlled by another intelligence. It may be that intelligence is just the right thing to have to render yourself extinct. Just watching that made me sweat. Just imagine intelligence itself being the sole reason for the height of human civilization and simultaneously the reason for its potential failure as a species. Is this the reason we have yet to come into contact with extraterrestrials? Some people seem to think so. But gosh, wouldn't that be tragically ironic? That's why to help us get to the bottom of these shenanigans, we're discussing the Fermi Paradox and what it means for the future of our big blue ball we call Earth. Assuming, of course, we don't all burn to a crisp in a fiery flash of atomic hellfire first. <laughs> don't worry. Expert forecasters on global threats say the probability of nuclear war within the next year is at an all-time low of 10%. We've come a long way since the Cuban Missile Crisis. Anyway, the term Fermi Paradox is derived from the name of its conceptual founder and Italian-American physicist, Enrico Fermi. The paradox comes from a simple conversation held by Enrico and his colleagues sometime in the summer of 1950. During a tasty sit-down luncheon, while enjoying a delicious Salisbury steak and some Blanco mac and cheese, Fermi curiously contemplated the reason why humans haven't yet contacted other intelligent life in the galaxy, despite the extreme likelihood of such an occurrence, or its sheer probability. Confused? Well, you must have forgotten to take your mintats today. In layman's terms, there are so many solar systems with so many planets in our galaxy that the chance of finding intelligent aliens is much higher than not. You see, if I were a betting man in Vegas and rolled a pair of dice three times, the chance of those dice coming up snake eyes or double ones is very small in just three rolls. But if you were to roll the dice, say, 1,000 times, it would almost be impossible for the dice to not land on snake eyes. You see, it's a numbers game, my friends, and I'd place my bet on the existence of intelligent life in the galaxy any day of the week. Though I don't recommend intentionally rolling snake eyes at the craps table, because no one likes a penniless loser. So now that we've got that down pat, you're probably wondering, if it's so likely that they're out there, why haven't we encountered them? Well, according to some loonies, they're already here, among us. I don't know about you, but it would take nothing less than a Vault-Tec salesman to convince me of that one. Good morning! vault calling! On a more serious note, there are actually billions of stars in our home galaxy, the Milky Way. Many of those stars are way older than our sun, and those stars have planets too, of course. Naturally, there are billions of planets as well. And in comparison to how old they are, the Earth has aged like a fine wine. Because the numbers don't lie, we know that a large amount of these older planets are found in the habitable zone, or Goldilocks zone, of their native star. 
If you're not sure what the Goldilocks Zone is, click the link in the top right of the screen now and learn yourself a thing or two at our newly implemented Starfield Database. If there's so many darn planets out there in the habitable zone like Earth, but millions of years older, it speaks to reason that at least a handful of those rare planets would be home to an intelligent species similar to humans. And they would have a lot longer time to evolve and figure out space travel than we've had. So if that's the case, then like old Egghead Fermi said, where are they? Is it really possible that we could be the first intelligent species to rise in the galaxy or even the universe? Could the aliens be intelligent and yet not have developed advanced technologies such as the USSA's Delta IX rocket? Are the very ideas of colonization and intergalactic traversal unique to Earth dwellers? <sighs> Alas, we arrive at the grimmest of conclusions. What if? What if? The very nature of intelligent life is to destroy itself. Well, from our humble home planet to theirs, and potentially millions of light years separating us from our distant space cousins, there's one thing you can be sure of. War, war never changes.